Glad you could join us again on this Thursday. So today we're gonna to do something a little different. You've mostly just seen paintings so far, but I do all kinds of art and really most artists do. I mean, you just wanna play with anything you can get your hands on. Just be creative with whatever you come across. So today we're gonna to talk about illumination, which back in the middle ages when they had handmade books and they were really valuable and monks had lots of time on their hands to sit around and draw all over them you'd see like music or manuscripts or pretty much anything that was a book had illustrations all over it. And so what I do, um, I'm a musician as well, so in this example we have music that I've transposed or transcribed for tuba. So what I've done is I go through, and usually people try to get the notes to fit just right so that they fill out that whole line. I didn't want to do that, so I would leave off and have all these spaces, and then one day I was like, wait a minute, that's blank space. I could color on that. So I did. So I'll draw little flowers and bugs and 
whatever you feel like. And, and this works too for, you know, if you want to do a poem with calligraphy or something and then you want to put stuff around it. So this just happens to be my example. And so I have some music that I've transcribed that's still in pencil. So I'll show you the beginning stages of how to ink it after you have, as I always start with pencil. It's just, it's nice to be able to fix things if you mess up. Yep, she got an oops eraser right there. Yes. It says oops. oops. Yeah, and I, I definitely use that. So uh, what we do is after we ink it, we erase any traces of the pencil before we color and you'll get to see that. All right, so let's get started on inking this thing. So I first wanna talk a minute about ink. So I do own a bunch of different kinds of inks. Uh, those are just three of them. Well, I actually have four here. But the, the tricky thing is not all inks are going to work well for use with markers because some of them, they look really nice, they feel nice, but then whenever you go in to go color with your marker, uh, even if it's totally dry, things will still smear. So I had to go through, that's why I have so many inks, is because I'd buy an ink and then I'd take it home and test it to see if it was gonna smear. So the one that I have that I've found so far works the best for me is the Sumi ink, so it's for that nice calligraphy. And I've noticed it works really well. It doesn't smear at all. So that's what I want to use. Now for pens, I love the old fashioned dip pens. So I have this nib, I can't remember the, the name of this one, but it's, it's, a, it's a large nib, but it has this really fine point. So I, I can really do a lot with this. And for really detailed stuff, I have one that's even more fine. And since this has this tiny little neck, uh, on the bottle, I have to find something to put my ink in. Now I prefer to have something that's that has a narrower opening because this kind of evaporates a little bit, but that's what I have available, so that's what I'm using right now. Don't eat it. it Don't looks, eat it, yes. It's in a baby food jar is what it looks like. It, I do actually use baby food jars for some of my stuff, like if you Ooh. noticed in my gouache. She the, recycles. <laughs> I do. The, okay. Uh, the container I put my water in for the gouache, yes, was a baby food pumpkin, squished up pumpkin. So there are a few tricky things with the ink. So I have it beading up a lot on my pen here, so I just kind of want to wipe it a bit. It's a super clean nib, so it I'm used to working with really dirty ones because I'm terrible and don't clean them a lot. But Don't tell people that. <laughs> You're a professional. I am a professional, but I am also a sloppy person. <laughs> so I have, I have it loaded, and the trick is, if you overload it, it will blot all. It'll just put ink. It'll just like bleh, ink all over the place, and you can't undo that. So you want to avoid that. So if you get too little on, it'll not have a good stream of ink, but it's easier to just go over with more ink than to undo that. So. I'm first going to go on a spot that I know is going to be okay if I blot out on it to test it a bit because it's been a while since I've used this particular nib. So I'm going on the rest bar here and hey, it's going okay. So it's safe to do these smaller things. And so you kind of want to hold the pen at a 45 degree angle and um, that's the best angle to do this. And the, if you push a little harder on it, so see, I'm gonna do this rest here. I'm gonna do the little circle here, and then I want this line to be thin. So I'm gonna lightly come like this, and then I'm gonna push a little bit. I mean, see, that was kind of thin because I was still at an angle, but if I was doing it straight down, say like on this note, it's gonna be a little thicker because the nib has these two pieces of metal. It's like, it's all one piece, but there's a hole here and beyond the hole from here out, it's actually cut to be two pieces making that fine point. And that's actually how it distributes the ink. Mm. So if you push, those two pieces go farther away from each other and they'll put down more ink. And if you do it lighter, they're gonna stay closer together and have a thinner line. See guys, this is cool. I'm learning a lot too. Yeah, and it's really fun, you know, it's, um, it's kind of fun to, I remember when I first started using these pens, I even, 
I even took them to class and took my notes with a dip pen, and yeah, that was always fun. Oh, um, see, she fancy too, huh? <laughs> Dang. I'll have to show you my notebook one of these days. <laughs> But that's just, it was practice, and, you know, I got so used to using that. I had some teachers think that I was not going to be able to keep up in class because of it, but then they'd watch me, and they're like, oh, you're actually really faster than some of the people writing with regular pencils. And I'm like, yeah, it's because I know what I'm doing. Ha, ha, ha. All right, so. So this is. Don't tell people that either. You got to be humble. <laughs> Dang, she getting, she getting cocky over here, guys. I do believe in practice. I mean, again, I I got my degree in tuba performance, actually. So, I mean, my life is centered around practice. And I do that for everything that I get interested in. I practice, practice, practice. Nah, she good at what she do. You seen what she do already. <laughs> and then I'm just going to finish out this line. Usually when I'm doing this, just for me, I do the whole page of notes before I go on to the next stage of illustrating. But just to demonstrate all the steps, I'm just going to do this one line. I guess I can show you the words too. Um, yeah, let's see. So I will just do a couple of words to show how I'm very lightly marking. I'm not pushing very hard at all. Like, I, I was putting more pressure when I was doing the notes. Dang, she wasn't playing. She really do know what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see. Oop. And you can see, um, that's where I started to run out of ink a little bit. And so it, it gets kind of ghosty. And that's when you know it's time to get more ink. All right. So then, since I'm going to pause for a moment, you always want to clean the nib before you set it down. All right. So we have um, a little bit of start on the notes here. But I'm going to go ahead and skip to adding the pretty flowers and stuff. So I like to just kind of make stuff up because... I kind of want to get that feel like, um, you know, like those old manuscripts have. I mean, they often, they often depicted real plants and animals, but a lot of it too is just kind of just stuff from their imagination. So as a biologist, I often try to get stuff super accurate or at least realistic. And this is the one thing that I still do that's just kind of going with whatever comes out of my brain. So unless I'm actually adding an animal, then just because I work with bugs, that's... She likes bugs. I love me some bugs. It freaks me out. <laughs> so yeah, he gets freaked out in my house because we have tons of bugs and things like that. So she likes flowers too. I do like the flowers. I don't know a lot about flowers yet, though I'm trying to learn. So. As I learn, I will probably start adding more that are real, because that seems to be what I do. But I do also like kind of having the freedom to just make stuff up as I go. So I'm just kind of adding these sketches. Now you can see I'm doing actually pretty hard, solid line here. I usually try to keep this a little lighter, because then it's easier to erase if I mess up. Um, but some of my cartooning, whenever I do that, I often get the, these hard lines. And so I've noticed if I've been doing a lot of cartooning lately, um, I try to do a different kind of illustration. I'm going straight into my hard lines, but that's okay. It's, you know, it's whatever works best for you. Cause even with the hard lines, it's still going to be easy to, easier to correct any mistakes than if it was with an actual I have, there we go, I have a bunch of notes. You do something. Okay. He's got my pins. So this is one. Oh, I should have shown you before I started. See this one, let's compare the two real quick, just briefly, let you see. So this one's larger, has a different shape, and the tip 
is a little wider. Let's make sure that's nice and close. All right. This one I'm very familiar with using because it's the, the other one I use a whole bunch. You can see how much faster I can go with this one because it's just a little easier to use this slightly larger nib. And I don't know if it's, it's easier just because it's a little larger or if it's because I probably use this nib a lot more. So we've got these a little chippy 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 Yeah. We've got this other vine here with this funky little leaf. And here's the fastest line work ever. Look at that. Zoom. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, so fast. Zoom. Check it out. Yeah. So quick question. They got to use what you're using? Oh. Is um, there other tools they can use to do what you're doing? So, yes. Actually, when I first started doing this whole outline, you know, sketching and then inking before coloring. This was, I would have started this method in junior high. And this is for anything like cartooning or just you want to draw a horse or something. Um, I would always sketch it first. And then I hit upon using an ink pen, like I, I any black ink pen, basically. I would then go over with the pen and then I'd go back and erase the pencil marks. So it may not have the same like variety of, see so you can see where parts of this are thick and then I have thinner lines here. You won't maybe have that necessarily, but you can. Um, you can go over, so let me see if I can demonstrate with this pen. So I'm gonna try to keep it real straight as if it's a regular pen, okay, and then Say I want to go back a little bit to kind of, so that was basically the same strokes, but I made that one thicker. So we could talk about that one of these days, maybe another video I can show some techniques with some really basic cheap tools that I learned and figured out a lot of stuff on. Because it'll take a little bit more time, but you can get different thicknesses with just a regular old pen. You're just basically going back and pretending like you, you know, and then when you're done, you can tell people, oh yeah, I definitely had a dip pen, ha ha. They don't need to know. All right, so we have a nice little section done here and it's all dry. That's one, another thing to check. Always check to make sure it's all dry because I've done that before. There was like one little blot that was still wet and I went to color and it just went all right, so we're gonna erase the pencil marks so people don't know that we ever were here with a pencil. Now it's okay if you can still see, especially that's one one issue that can come up if you're doing the hard lines like I was doing with my pencil, is even if you erase it, you can still see the pressure marks. And But that's okay, you know, especially if it's not, like here I have it just off a little bit and no one's really gonna notice that unless they're really looking, but then they're obviously too close to your business and need to get out of your way. Oh wow, that looks really cool. <laughs> the erasing is actually really fun. It's a satisfying step because it's just like, ah ha 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 ha, giant eraser, erase your face, so. That's messed up. Why would you erase somebody's face? That's they weren't me. using it. We're supposed to be nice. Oh man, okay, I'll, I'll revise my schedule. Okay, so, you know, if you don't have the tool, you can just simply brush it off like this. But if you have one, this is usually in the, uh, like, for drafters and illustrators. My dad had this because he was a drafter, so I have one. And it basically just, oh, yep. hold on. Yeah. Once again, we have a professional, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. All right. So, no more eraser debris. All right. So now we get to add the color. So this is always the most fun. I, I mean, honestly, every every stage is fantastic. So remember, guys, you don't have to have a marker collection like she does. Yeah, this 
I spent years building up this collection because they are very expensive, but you don't have to have these. I had just made a decision that I wanted these professional grade illustrating markers because I was doing a lot of that. So I worked hard to build the collection, but years and years and years before that, like I said, I don't think I started getting these. I think I had four of these markers when I started college. Um, so clear from elementary school to college, I was using Crayola markers. And you can actually do a lot, you know, they have so many shades anymore these days. And let's see, I think I bought my daughter a set of 64 of them for just like 20 bucks recently. So you can, and it has so many colors in there. I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's more colors than I had available. So, you know, it's, it's doable with other things but if you're like I think I want to have a career as an illustrator then you probably want to get some other things it's just not necessary okay so with the markers now I do a lot of shading so with markers see how this parts lighter and this is a little darker that's because and this is all the same color that's because if you go over a second time you'll get start to get different shades because it's adding more ink. So I'll show, I'm gonna make this a little more 3D by just lightly going along the side here. Can you do this with the Crayola markers? Yes. So you can literally like make it lighter on one part and darker mm -hmm. even with the Crayola markers? Yep. Okay. Yeah, this is actually how, that's actually how I learned this stuff. I mean, pretty much the majority of the marker techniques I have now um, the basics of them I got just from playing with Crayola markers because that's what I had available for so many years. Oh, film guy here real quick. The reason why I'm asking is I'm in the boat that needs the Crayola markers. See, I like this. I'm trying to learn too with you guys. So that's why I'm emphasizing can you do it with the Crayola markers. Yes, I'm in that you boat. Can. You can, you can. I, I got really good at making do with what I had available because my parents didn't have a lot of money when I was growing up and... Um, especially not to spend on art supplies. So they would get me stuff, but it was, you know, the affordable stuff that you might get for kids. So I made do with it. And a lot of times I, all I had was number two pencils and paper, and I got really good with graphite. <laughs> I mean, I, I mastered those pencils, and I could show you some of my work with that sometime too. Now, a lot of times I'll add a, a lot of different layers of colors so for example i want this to be a little deeper so i'm going to get an even deeper green now typically i have a piece of paper to test my colors on because even though i've been using these markers for a long time you want to be absolutely sure before you put it on the final piece because you again you can't really undo very much of that so i think yeah there it is that might be the one i'm looking for let me see uh, yeah, maybe. So this is a different kind of green going in. Just kind of dabbing it in there. I just wanted these a little darker. And then I want even darker grass green. Yeah, that one. On the tips here. Kind of opposite what I was actually thinking of doing originally. And... As often happens, while I'm in the middle of this, I changed my mind. In fact, that's still not as dark as I wanted, guys. There, maybe this one. Yeah, that's what I'm talking She's about. She's very particular. I am, I get very particular about what I'm doing. I just, I'm very picky about colors. And you know what's funny is uh, when I first started using these, uh, really getting into these markers, you often start thinking of everything as, like, you, I would look at a sunset and I'd start thinking, oh, I can make that with this color and this color and this color and this color. I do that with paint now, too, but it's kind of where it started was with the markers and colored pencils. I used lots of colored pencils. Okay, and I have this cool tool that is a colorless blender. Now... I'm not entirely sure how this works, how this would work with Crayola, because I don't know if they make one. But if you had Crayola markers and wanted to do this blending, you could probably like invest in just one of these. And I bet that they, I haven't tried it yet, but I bet they would work with, it would work with Crayola. And basically what it does, see how it's softened 
those colors a bit. Let's do the crazy color. Because I want that flower to be really bright. I want it to start with a purple on the edges. So, let me show you. Yeah, that's it. So, sometimes I'll make the edges one color. It's kind of fountaining in. And then, I want it to be, have a little bit of blue. Because, why not? Blue is awesome. And then, you know what? I just changed my mind again. I was going to do one thing, but I think this would be fun. Bright yellow at the base. Alright, and then I'm going to get the blender. Because I, oops, that's the green. There we go. So, blending that in a little. And basically, what that does, you can watch it. Some, You can get some cool effects as it kind of pushes the color away. It's kind of neat. So, I just wanted to show a little more close up of what it looks like to do some of the inking. I wanted to show you in real time, but man, it takes a lot of time. But you can kind of see how I'm keeping that 45 degree angle, or at least trying to. And again, I'm keeping less pressure when I want the thinner lines. I, I keep it nice and light and then add a little more pressure if I want the line to be a little thicker. Because it makes those two little pieces of metal spread apart more when you put more pressure on it. And that's how you get the wider bands of ink and then the lighter the pressure, the narrower the gap, and so the thinner the bands of ink. So here I finished out the little Amphiagrion. Cute little thing, working on his butt there. <laughs> and his wings. And I just thought I'd give you a glimpse of our reference, the male Amphiagrion. Okay, so here we're coloring our Amphiagrion. This part of him is black, but I'm giving a nice base color of a kind of reddish brown. Because that's what's going to be seen through the gaps of the black. Because black is really tricky to deal with when you're coloring in marker. You lose a lot of detail. I mean, it's still there, but you have to really squint to see the black lines when you have black marker. So what I often do is I will leave little bits. I'll put a base color down like this and see I've added the black now. And you can see where I left little bits of the base color around where we have those detailed lines just to kind of help make sure those don't get lost in the void. And there I'm adding is red, and I didn't feel like it popped quite enough. I tried adding a little orange, it wasn't enough. So I went over with a little yellow. I mean, it doesn't really make it orange, it just makes it a more saturated, you know, brighter red. Just makes it a little more intense. And then I added just a little bit of creamy yellow and gray highlights to the wing veins to kind of hint at that because they do have just clear wings. And here we're doing the base color for a lot of the veg. Even if you're gonna have all kinds of different greens, I often do the same base color on a lot of them if it's close enough and then I start adding more layers of other colors depending on which plant I'm working on. So you could see the one that the little Amphiagrion is perched on, I did a lot of yellow, and then I kind of like how it looked in sort of like it was a variegated plant of some sort. That was not intentional, but I liked where it was going, so I went with it. And then this, that bit I wanted to have a little darker, so I kept changing my mind on how dark I wanted it, but as always, it's much easier to add more if you want it darker than to try to undo that. So sometimes I'll do multiple layers because I'll think, ah, maybe this is going to be dark enough. And I'm, after all, it's like, nope, no, it's not. I need more. And it's 
actually something I can act on if I want to change it instead of, oh, I made it too dark and now I can't change anything. The blue flower was fun. It's kind of a bluish purpley thing. I thought it looked sort of aquatic, like one of the lilies or something, but again, it's something just down in my head, so. That funky flower, I did lots of colors on it. You can really have fun with the imaginary flowers. Just go to town on the fun colors. I used three different pinks for that one flower. And then I liked it so much I decided to make that other one the same color. So, there we go. Nice colored thing. I hope you enjoyed watching as I illuminated this piece of music from Schubert's Eventerizer. Transcribed it for tuba and then we made it art. Not that it wasn't art already, but we made it a different kind of art. So now that I've done one page, you guys got a little sense of the time it takes as all those sped up videos were speeding it up eight times. So. Oh, now I'm on a good start, so I only have uh, 40 pages left. Anyway, hope you had fun watching that, and I will definitely show you whenever I get more of it done. I'll just kind of check in once in a while, and uh, I'd say that's a good start. So, hope you also got to enjoy watching a different kind of thing you can do with markers. Hope to see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.